In this video, we're going to talk about how do we actually draw the chair conformations of the cyclohexanes do a ring flip, and how do we predict which one would predominate, or, or in other words, which which one is the most stable, the lowest in energy. So I have an example here, and the first thing I'm going to do is draw my chair. So I'm going to draw two parallel lines and two more parallel lines and then just connect the dots all right now for convention you, to, to, to not get confused you always want to label your carbons so in this case I'm gonna say this is carbon 1 2 3 4 5 6 all right so with my with 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 and the labeling here is arbitrary, right? I, I could have chosen the the dimethyl group as my 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 carbon one, right? So it doesn't matter where you start with respect to the first one. You just got to keep it consistent. So notice that we're counting in this direction, uh, in the counterclockwise direction. So the same thing applies for the chair. I, I always choose this carbon, the top carbon, as my number one carbon, and then two etc right so again I'm going counterclockwise now the first carbon I actually see a CH3 going down so what does that mean that means that CH3 is in this position all right the one that's going up remember we have a uh, a hydrogen here as well right we just didn't draw it in but the one that's going up is actually the hydrogen right so on carbon number one I have my CH3 going down now going to carbon number three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I see that I have a di I see have a I see that I have a CH three. Well, well, a dimethyl group going up, right? So that means that it's in this position, and it's going up, right? So that is the first uh, chair conformation of the molecule. Now let's go to the ring flip. And we say it's an equilibrium, right? not really equilibrium. One predominates, but they go back and forth. Now with the ring flip, I'm just going to draw my parallel lines the opposite way. Right? And now, here's what I want you to keep in mind. This carbon that was number one, becomes number one down here, right? So we're doing a flip. So this carbon that was number one becomes number one down here. So this is one. I'm still gonna count in the same direction. So this is two, three, four, etc. All right. Now on carbon number one, here's what I want you to keep in mind. And here's the language I here's the language I want you to use. Whatever the substituents are in the, in the chemical formula, you keep the same way. So on carbon number one, it doesn't matter if I do the ring flip or no, or, or not. The idea is that my CH3 is always going down. So on carbon one, I have my CH3 going down. Right? So automatically, you should notice that you should refrain from using a language that, okay, well, equatorial means up or equatorial means you know down or, or whatever it does not mean it, it, it's relative right so equatorial can mean either up or down you don't want to say okay well equatorial means up for sure or even say axial means down it does not matter it could be either or right so on carbon number one two three on three i still have my ch3 my dimethyl group going up right so in this case it would be in this position and there's my dimethyl group now which one would be more stable? And I want you to keep this in mind. The equatorial position you usually want the you usually want the, the 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 group or the substituent with the highest molecular weight or the bigger the substituent essentially. So the bigger the substituent, you always want those on the equatorial position, right? It's just simply more stable in that regard. So out of these two molecules, you would say that this would be the most stable conformation of the molecule because the equal in the equatorial position I have a bigger dimethyl group versus a CH3. In this position you could see it's in axial, right? So you have the dimethyl group that's in an axial position, 
right? The big group that's in an axial position. And the smaller group, which is just a CHD, is in the equatorial position. So we say that we want the, we want the opposite to be true. So we want the bigger group to be on the in the equatorial position, and the smaller group to be in the axial position, right? And furthermore, remember, we haven't drawn in our hydrogens, right? We did not draw in our hydrogens, and you could see just from the one hydrogen that I drawn. Look at this. Now look at this interaction. This is what we call steric hindrance. So, uh, so this is the reason why we want or bigger substituent in the equatorial position. And you can see from this part, it's further away from any other atoms that you may draw in. Let's talk about another one. Let's do this one. Let's say on an exam you're given, and I want you to pause the video and do this one. I want you to pause the video and do this one. All right? How would you draw the chair confirmations for this molecule? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is draw two parallel lines draw two more parallel lines and there's my chair now remember we said that we always label this carbon number one so this is one two three so follow me one two three so we're counting in the counterclockwise direction and we're going to label this carbon as one two three four All right and remember we said that the first carbon that you pick you just keep it consistent right so i could have chose chosen this carbon this carbon one or even this right does not matter. I usually like to choose the substituents as my carbon number one. So on carbon number one, and let's label this so we're not confused. So this is one, two, three, that would be four, etc. Right? So on carbon number one, we see that with CH, the CH3 is going up. So that means it's in this position. And going all the way to carbon number four, in this case, it's one, two, three, four. I see that I have this, this this larger group, trimethyl group, going up as well, right? So it's coming out at you. So that means it's in this position. All right, and let's write in our atoms for illustration purposes. All right, so there's my big CH3 group. All right, in a chair confirmation, we're going to draw the lines the opposite, right? So instead of going this way and, and this way, we're going we're gonna to use them going this way and this way, right? So essentially, two more parallel lines and two more parallel lines. Right? So there's a chair flip. Now, remember we said from the previous example that this, that was carbon one, Right, so this that was carbon one becomes this, right? So this becomes carbon one now, right? So this is one, two, three, four. Right? Keep the 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 direction of counting in the same uh, consistent, right? So in the same direction. Right, so on carbon one we have the CH three that's going up, right? Or it's coming out at you. So my CH3 in carbon one is in this position. Now I'll go one, two, three, four. On carbon four, we have the trimethyl group that is, uh, we have the trimethyl group that is going up. So it's, it's going up. So it's in this position. All right. So now that we've arrived at our, our structure, the idea is we want to identify which one is the least stable to so which one is lower in energy. Can you pause the video and think about it? Right. The answer would be this one. Right. So this, this chair confirmation will actually predominate 
Obviously, it's a mixture, but this check confirmation will predominate. And the reason being is that we had the bigger trimethyl group in the equatorial position, right? So again, and, and here you can see it in the axial position. So here again, you do not want to associate, let's say, equatorial with being up, right? It's relative, right? And if, and if I actually draw just a cyclohexane, so let's say I draw a cyclohexane molecule, let's look at how we actually, let's look at what's going on, right? These are the bonds, right? These are the bonds, right? So these are the bonds on a regular cyclohexane molecule. So what you should see, right, is that axial and equatorial actually kind of alternate, right? So at this carbon, you would say that this is the equatorial position and this is the axial position. At this carbon, this is the axial and this is the equatorial. Notice, uh, right so so and i should actually draw it down right so so this is actually down so right so notice that this carbon and, and let's say this is carbon one we have the axial going up the equatorial is actually going down on this carbon the axial is going down the equatorial is going up right and so it alternates back and forth so this is why I want you to refrain from using the language that, okay, well, axial means up, or let's say equatorial means down, right? That's not the case. It's relative.